Good day, future RMTs. Let's go over some of the must-knows in hematology. These are flashcards of must-knows in hematology, and I have here around 100 flashcards, and we'll go over them quickly. 1.5 mg per ml this is the optimum concentration of EDTA. Versin, this is the disodium salt of EDTA. Equestrin, tripotassium salt of EDTA. 1 is to 9. This is the citrate. Uh, this is the preferred ratio for your citrate tube. And this is used for coagulation studies. Okay, please remember, your ratios are reversible. So when you're asked, what is the anticoagulant to blood ratio? 1 is to 9. But if you're asked, what is the blood to anticoagulant ratio? Okay, 9 is to 1. Black top. We use 1 is to 4. Okay, this also contains citrate and used in the Western Gen ESR. Potassium oxalate, this shrinks cells. Ammonium oxalate, swells your cells. 15 to 20 units per ml, optimum concentration for heparin. Pink top, uh, this contains spray dried to EDTA and used in the banking. White top, okay, this uh, contains EDTA and separation gel used for molecular diagnostics. Soybean trypsin inhibitor, this is used in your FDT studies. Royal Blue Top. This contains sodium heparin and sodium EDTA used for toxicology. Tan Top. Lead testing. Yellow or gray and orange. This contains thrombin, which is a clot activator. And compared to your red top, uh, this, uh, this makes it possible for us to prepare serum more quickly. Hemostasis. This is the process that retains blood within the vascular system during periods of injury. So basically, when you say hemostasis, this is the process which prevents your blood loss when blood vessels are injured. Primary hemostasis involves platelets and blood vessels. Secondary hemostasis involves coagulation factors, von Willebrand disease, deficiency of von Willebrand factor, abnormal results with restocytin, normal with your ECA. Please review your uh, aggregation studies. Bernard Soulier syndrome, GP1B deficiency, hemoglobin electrophoresis, used to identify abnormal hemoglobins, cellulose acetate, hemoglobin electrophoresis. This uses pH 8.6, and this cannot be used to identify hemoglobin S since hemoglobin S co migrates with hemoglobin D and hemoglobin G in this particular method. Citrate agar, hemoglobin electrophoresis, pH 6 to 6.3, this can identify hemoglobin S. Sodium metabisulfite test, hemoglobin screening, positive result, cycling of cells. Sodium dithionite test, hemoglobin S screening, also for uh, also the positive result is turbidity. Anion exchange microchromatography, this measures hemoglobin A2. Bet test, the reagent is sodium hydroxide, and this is an alkali denaturation test for hemoglobin. Singer test, this uses POH. Okay, Howard Betke, acid elution test, heat precipitation test, screening for hemoglobin H, the, uh, we incubate the sample at 50, cent, uh, 50 degrees Celsius for 2 hours. Isopropanol, isopropanol uh, propanol precipitation test, okay, this is used to screen for hemoglobin. RBC membrane components, protein 50%, lipid 40%, carbohydrate 10%. LCAT or lecithin cholesterol acyl transferase. This is the enzyme which maintains cholesterol content of your RBC membrane. Codocyte, increased cholesterol. Ovalocyte, decreased cholesterol. Spectrin and actin. This maintains the biconcave shape of the RBCs. So basically, your spectrin, this is the framework of your RBC. And a deficiency or a problem in your spectrin causes your hereditary spherocytosis. And then Mayerhoff pathway supplies 90% of ATP, okay, wherein two ATP are generated for lactic acid broken down in this process, or lactic acid created. Hexose monophosphate pathway, this provides reduced glutathione to prevent denaturation of hemoglobin. Heinz bodies, consists of denatured hemoglobin. Supravital stains, these are required to demonstrate your reticulocyte, Heinz bodies, and hemoglobin H. Hitting, this is a process of removing inclusions in RBCs 
uh, in the spleen. Rapoport bearing pathway. This generates two 3DPG and it regulates the affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. Remember, increase two 3DPG, shift to the right. Methemoglobin reductase. This maintains hemoglobin uh, iron in the ferrous state. Remember, methemoglobin contains iron in the ferric state. Okay, we need the ferrous state. Okay, we need iron in the ferrous state because that is the iron found in normal hemoglobin. Paling, this is the destruction of aged RBCs by the spleen. Okay, differentiate this from pitting, extravascular lysis. This destroys 90% of aged RBCs. And this happens uh, within the reticuloendothelial system and complement is not activated. Intravascular lysis destroys 10% of aged RBCs. Complement is activated within the blood vessel. That's why you call it intravascular. Ferritin, major storage form of iron. Anisocytosis, variation in size. RDW, or red cell distribution width. This correlates with the degree of anisocytosis. The normal is 11.5 to 14.5. Normocytic RBC, 80 to 100 femtoliters. That's the MCV of your normocytic RBCs. And this is in an acute blood loss, hemolytic anemia, and aplastic anemia. The mnemonics here is AHA, A-H-A. Acute blood loss, hemolytic anemia, aplastic anemia. Fanconi's anemia, this is a form of congenital aplastic anemia. Diamond black fan, congenital pure red cell ablation. Ehrlich technique, this uses your cover glass okay, to prepare your smear. Greater than 5 nucleated RBCs per 100 WBC. This requires correction for your adult WBC count. Please review the formula for your WBC correction. Less than 14%, greater than 60%. This is, these are the panic values for hematocrit. When you say panic values, these are values that needs to be reported immediately. Kennedy Wong, iron content determination methods of hemoglobin. 3.47 mg per ml. This is the amount of iron in hemoglobin. Neutrophils, they contain the enzyme LAP, the glucoside alkaline phosphatase. Less than 2,000, greater than 50,000. These are the panic values for WBCs. Totier's abscess, associated with mycosis conjoides. Hematocrit, okay, in the presence of cryoglobulin or cryofibrinogen, increased. Hematocrit in the presence of giant platelets increased also. Hematocrit in high WBC increased. Hematocrit in hyperglycemia greater than 600 mg per deciliter also increased. Hematocrit in autoagglutination decreased. Hematocrit in clotted samples decreased. Hematocrit with, uh, with hemolysis in vitro decreased. Hem uh, hematocrit in the presence of microcytic RBCs, of course, decreased. Hematocrit level requiring anticoagulant correction in coagulation studies, 55%. Wintrobe, this is the ESR method which requires correction. Westergren, ESR method not requiring correction. WBC count, corrected when nucleated RBCs are present. And again, please remember, when do we do your uh, correction for the WBC count? Reticulocyte count, corrected in patients with lower hematocrit. Please review the formula for the corrected reticulocyte count. 540 nanometers. This is the wavelength at which hemoglobin determination is read. Translocation 821. This is the cytogenetic abnormality in your FabM2. That's a type of uh, AML. Translocation 1517 is seen in M3. Translocation 911 in an M5A, translocation 922 or Philadelphia chromosome, this is, uh, this is seen in CML, 46 millimeters, this is the length of the clay plug that, uh, that we should uh, maintain when doing your span microhematocrit. 5 centimeters, this is the length of the tube to be filled with blood in the microhematocrit method. Oren, this is also known as your parahemophilia, okay, so that's Oren's disease. Factor 5. This is deficient in parahemophilia or your Oren's disease. Cyanide resistant peroxidase. This contains eosinophilic component in eosinophilic leukemia. Stratified sedimentation. 
the spore separation of RBC from the plasma layer due to increased number of reticulocytes. High FBS, which causes star, uh, darker staining of reticulocytes. Okay, so if you have a high uh, fasting blood sugar, your reticulocytes are darker when stained. Heparin, this causes pale staining of reticulocytes. 4 hours, this is the time when, uh, when you expect the D-dimer to become positive after the onset of DIC. Myelocytes, this is the dawn of neutrophilia. Aggregates of 3 to 4 cells, ROLU 1 plus. Aggregates of 5 to 10 cells, ROLU 2 plus. 3 plus, that would be uh, presence of only few free RBCs. Okay? Most are already in ROLU formation. 1%, slight polychromatia. 3%, 1 plus polychromatia. 5%, 2 plus polychromatia. 10%, 3 plus polychromatia. Greater than 11%, 4 plus polychromatia. Excessively red, okay, this is the effect of thin smear on PBS staining. Okay, so the PBS becomes excessively red. 0 to 49,000, platelet count, markedly decreased. 50,000 to 99,000, platelet count, moderately decreased. 100,000 to 149,000, platelet count, slightly decreased. 150,000 to 199,000, platelet count low normal. Okay, so take note, there's a low normal. 200,000 to 400,000, platelet count normal. 401,000 to 599,000, platelet count slightly increased. 600,000 to 800,000, platelet count moderately increased. And greater than 800,000, platelet count markedly increased. So please review the corresponding platelet, uh, the description of or the corresponding estimated platelet count. Okay, so that's it for our blitz session on hematology.